uh, and you start to forget where things go. And uh, I, I, fortunately, it's pretty easy to review, and I, I really do try very hard to review the things that I've forgotten so I don't lose anything. Um, now here, this is where things get really fun because I'm taking my hand, the, the basic shape that I've been drawing this whole time, and I'm going to draw something a little bit more wild. Um, this is uh, more of a talon. And uh, again, you can see that all the structure is the same, except that I've really accentuated the size of the knuckles uh, as compared to the size of the, the fingers between the knuckles. And um, I'm going to give this hand claws instead of fingertips. But the actual anatomy of the hand is the same. These sorts of hands are actually much easier to draw too because I can I can have so many folds of skin and so much stuff going on, and because it's it's a it's a claw like kind of alien sort of hand a little bit, um, a lot more wild stuff can be more believable as as long as you keep it within the realm of uh, plausibility, I guess. But it it doesn't have to have the same kind of accuracy. So um, once you once you can draw um, a proper human hand accurately, it becomes very easy to draw these sorts of hands. Uh, and they are a lot more fun. They're very liberating. I can I can kind of go in here and make the choices of, of the sorts of things that I want to put in um, without really worrying uh, you know, that line that I just put in between the thumb and and the the tip of the thumb and the base of the thumb, I, I wouldn't have drawn into a normal hand, I think. But it kind of works there. It makes it look very very tendony. I'm just using a lot of negative space to build up my shadows. I'm trying to hook my line, especially for drawing like this, so that I want to be uh, very aggressive looking. So every line that I put in has a bit of a, a hook and a barb to it. I'm going to make these uh, knuckles a lot more pronounced so it's, it's easier for me to draw a nice big thick shadow underneath that knuckle. Now these fingers I'm just going to shadow out, and I, I'm actually doing that. Um, not so much out of lazy, uh, laziness, believe it or not, but if I were to draw all those in, uh, uh, lit, uh, it starts to get a little more visually confusing. And I'm using the kinds of um, stretching to the skin that you would see on a normal hand, just a little bit more accentuated. A little bit more um, pronounced. This is a very, very fun sort of hand to draw. And there are a few different ways that, that I, I, I can draw claws just based on uh, different influences. So I, I think after this one, I'll go ahead and and draw uh, the sort of claw that I've learned from Dale Keown, who is a, is a great comic book artist. Um, he did a book called Pit, which is very, very influential for me. Um, so here we go. I'm going to draw some uh, some claws that are more like fingernails that actually uh, come out from um, under the skin. And this is this is a, such a strong influence from Dale Keown for me. He does these um, incredibly well. So here's my nail and there's the tip of my finger and uh, I'm drawing a much thicker um, 
layer of skin over that because it's a much thicker nail than a, a human would have. And the rest is all pretty straightforward. It's um it's a finger just like I would I would normally draw. And you can see with the rendering that I'm doing on that finger that I'm really trying to follow the actual rounded form of the finger. And that's something that is very, very important. All of your rendering that you do at all times should... Uh, the, the, well, the purpose of rendering is to soften a, a dark area into a light area. Or for just rendering that's out in the open, uh, not attached to a shadow. It's just to softly describe a shadow without going so far as to put in a black. Um, but... I think the number one most important rule of rendering effectively is uh, understanding the curvature of your form and rendering along that curve or diagonal to that curve even or uh, uh, crossways to it around, you know, but it has to, it has to describe that form. And uh, you can see I'm, I'm rendering around the form, around the curve of my finger. <clears throat> and uh, I, I see a lot of times with artists um, starting that they'll have some lines, uh, even in the same same row of rendering, they'll have some lines that follow the line of the, the form and then other lines that will start to lose that and kind of curve into the form or curve away from the form. And I, I think it's just not really being firmly aware of of the the direction the line needs to go in and I, I've had a lot of questions about that people asking um, how I know how to place my rendering and that's really all it is the size of the rendering um, is is a different thing um, but the the angle of the rendering always has to follow the form as long as you stick with the form that you have established and you understand how to round that form should never have too much trouble. So here I'm drawing more of a, a broken, I guess, witch-like finger, all dirty and grimy. So this is a regular human hand, but um, a little more nasty. And all of the all of the cracks and in, in detail I'm putting on that thumb again are all just kind of a negative space type of a thing. Uh, as I draw the line downward. It's thin, and then if I hook that line a little bit, it's a little thicker because that hook is actually turning away from the light further. So, the, and just that little hook actually gives it, it, it really gives it a lot of um, dimension. I'm really accentuating uh, all of my folds and creases. And again, trying to follow the form as much as possible with any rendering that I'm putting in. And you can see I can go along a form the way that I just did with that knuckle, or across a form the way that I would if I were drawing along the side of the finger. 